Hello guys, Suffolk Hobbit, and part three of my Dunland vlog is here. Apologies for a slight delay, I was hoping to do this in a real regular two week thing. Uh, I think I've gone over two weeks slightly, but uh, here it is. A um, bit more progress, or quite a bit more progress in the, in the basing and the character sense of things. Um, I won't go over the, the standard models too much, um, but I have done the bases to these guys, so the bases are looking much better. Got the stones on there have been sanded. Um, Art City, I think the previous video, I have, I, I do want the look of rough terrain, a real tundra look to them, so there's lots of stones and all these bases, and that will continue as a thing throughout the army, we'll have lots of tufts, um, see, you know, foot-based Thryden, for the example, there is all this tufts and whatnot, and sort of ragged grass and things, and all the, all the roughness of like a real rough, you know, uh, windswept land that Dunland appears to be. Uh, so, where do I start? Well, let's start with the main man. So he is now finished. Thryden, this hunk of metal in all his glory. He is done. Um, finished with spent painting him. Um, I've gone with the same theme, obviously, as the foot model. He's got the white highlights uh, under his cloak there to sort of point at the fact he's a bit more royal, a bit more regal. Uh, nice little bit of blue on the horse there. Uh, the wolf pelt on him and the wolf pelt on the horse are both the same, they're sort of the grey type. I know Games Workshop had two different colours and I was thinking this, but then I felt I wanted the greys, I wanted that look, I wanted to make it seem like almost like he prefers to find these wolves more. Um, just just sort of an idea of mine to be honest. Um, the red continues on the other side obviously. I still need to highlight a bit more gold onto the actual lamella armour, where I've got that sort of golden sort of brass copper sort of difference on his lamella armour that I've come sort of added to it rather than just all being standard metal. Um, and yeah, absolute joy to paint this model. I really enjoyed it. The horse went through a lot of stages of browns. He's got a mixture of scrag brown, mournfang brown, uh, even dried bark. I've mixed them up to different levels going through and also um, added white. Uh, not ceramite white, I've been using white scar because I'm finding ceramite white just it just clags up so quickly no matter how well you look after it, it just it just it just becomes a blob of white tack. It's, I don't understand what it is. Obviously, it's a high pigment count, I assume. Um, but I'm finding white scar is better than ceramite white. Also, just a little quick side note, I have on the base of Thryden borrowed the uh, Dunland Mounted Warriors with their little set piece of uh, a Royal, Royal Rohan uh, helmet and shield. So I'm going to paint them up as well and really make the base look awesome. Next up, so uh, we must go with these guys. So these guys are now finished, all glued together, and they are looking funky. Very pleased with them. Base is all nice, and uh, I've used sharp sand, obviously, and stones again. There's going to be lots of detail, lots of high, tall grass on these bases to really make them look like they're sort of charging through rough, barren lands and whatnot. Really pleased. I might add some spear tips and things. This guy in particular, you'll see that I've got him quite off the side of his base, and I've done that because I want this part of the base to have like maybe a couple of spears sticking through, some arrows maybe, something to make it look like his really sort of veering out of the way and give the base a lot of character. And obviously looking forward to uh, getting some more of these guys when Forge World is open properly and Games Workshop in itself and whatnot. Um, so I can sort of work on some, uh, what's worth conversions and whatnot as well. Um, dare I say it, I might even give them a spear or something just different. I know they can't use spears in the game, but just, just to give it a look of something different, who knows, who knows. I had a very brief painting session this morning before Littlem woke up. Uh, just some basic bits, went over some undercoating of certain models. Uh, got, another, got a shield done for the for the horseman. Um, I'm going to add a brown or a blue to the opposing blacks uh, part just for now. And then highlight them up as well. This one, I may leave a simple colour. I might I may leave it in a simple colour, like a brown or just an overall blue. And just add some patterns in. I was going to mimic these shields to the ones I've got so far for the foot models there, but I'm not. I'm going to experiment with some shields and things, and then further down the line, then start matching them up because I plan on buying loads, so I feel I can, I can have some uh, freedom to sort of experiment and whatnot really. Next up, we've got the banner. The banner is done. I'm very pleased with this, a raven banner. So I got this idea from a history website. Um, I think it's a reenactment page, possibly, but they had a picture of their bannerman, and he had a raven's banner on obviously a more triangular uh, banner that the Vikings would have had back in the good old days. Um, I'm quite happy with how this has come out. I'll still need to tidy up ever so slightly. Um, I want the beak 
the beak needs to be shorter and more angled. Uh, it's a bit too much of a duck beak, so I am going to go over that again. I need to add one more white strip on sort of the chest area here, if you want to call it chest area. But otherwise, I'm really pleased with that. It's coming out nice. It's got a nice sort of traditional dark age banner look to it. The background colour of the banner itself was simply Cantor blue with uh, the fang. Um, a little bit of Mechanicus grey mixed in there as well. And then highlights adding white and whatnot just to sort of slowly wet blend it up. Um, yeah, and it's come out really nice. I'm really pleased with that. The skull, I went for not the usual. I tend to make my skulls quite white. I went for a more dirty skull with this. This has got a lot of Mournfang brown and the Shabdi bone as well as Dryad Bark, I think, as well. Might have added a little bit of that in there as well. And then gently highlighted it up, but not too much because I wanted it to look dirty. I wanted it to look sort of um, like, like it's been out in the elements and stuff. So it's not bleached like some bones would or, you know, really nicely preserved bones and whatnot. So, yeah, so pleased with that. I've yet to pin that onto the banner bearer. Um, he will be pinned to so give it some like, maximum strength. I do love this model. I'm hoping when I buy another one of these, I'm actually going to look into trying to convert this dude into something else, something about a bit more awesome. So, watch this space. Could be fun. Might be a complete disaster, and I'll be looking on eBay to buy one to replace it. Who knows? But yeah, I did enjoy uh, did enjoy this completely. I've started work on the Oathmaker. Gorgeous model. Got the flesh tones all done. I need to tidy up his eye because his eye, the white bled out slightly, so it's not quite got the shadow that I want um, on the upper level. You can probably just see it there, the white sort of just goes up into his eye socket slightly. So I'm going to go over that with some brown just to tidy that up. But otherwise, his hand and face is all done. I've used a Vallejo uh, flesh tone for that. I think it's called Flat Flesh, actually. It's, quite, it's almost a bit of an orangey red sort of colour. Um, but I've used that and I'm quite enjoying using it. I might start moving on to Vallejo paints slightly a bit more because from the few I've used, as well as Army Painter paints, they just seem a bit more fluid than the Games Workshop stuff. Not not knocking it whatsoever, it's just a personal preference. But I think I might start experimenting a bit more now. And then we have Garolf Iron Skin. I'm well chuffed for this. This is a really, really good model, guys. I absolutely love this model. Um, about seven to eight hours I've spent on this guy now. Uh, base is yet to be finished. Obviously, as you can see, still a bit of work needed on him. But I'm really pleased with how he's come out. It's been very rewarding to paint him. I've really enjoyed painting him. Uh, the skin tones I've really experimented with. Um, I've used uh, Caraber Crimson as a slight wash. I've used uh, the, the Vallejo paint, obviously, the flat flesh. Um, I've used... Kislev flesh as the highlights as well as some white as well as some brown. So I've really experimented building up the layers and the levels. Um, I actually base coated him and then highlighted him before then giving him another base coat with the with some mechanic uh, Mephiston red sort of blended and mixed together with the flat flesh to give it sort of a nice red look to it. Um, and I also used a little bit of Noel Noil funnily enough as well. I had to think then, yeah, just on the skin tones, really make the muscular elements pop a bit more and whatnot. So I'm really chuffed with that, really pleased. Um, it's come out very nicely. Um, the eyes were quite a strain. I've given him one dead eye. It doesn't quite come out of this camera, which is unfortunate. I, you might be able to see, I'm not so sure. I've given him a dead eye here, so it's just a white eye. It's like, you know, that uh, it didn't survive whatever attack this was with the scar. The eye didn't survive, <laughs> basically. But I've given him one blue pupil there. Um, having said that, funny enough, with this, when I'm videoing, I don't know if any of you guys are the same when it comes to videos, but I find with this, when I'm videoing, the, the resolution of my screen I'm using on my uh, pad here, um, it seems to darken everything down, and then when I watch the video back before I then upload it, I notice it's a lot brighter, so hopefully you will see things a little bit better than what I actually see them as currently. Um, the leather, uh, whatever this is, this, this bit that just sort of hangs down over on the sides here, I don't know what you want to call that. What do you want to call that? I really don't know what that is, to be honest. It's just an extra random bit of leather armour, really, isn't it? I can't think what you'd call it. But yeah, that. Skirt. Well, no doubt I'll call it a skirt. I don't even want to chop my head off. Um, there's some metal rings <laughs> added to it. That had many layers of uh, painting and highlighting. Uh, it started off with uh, Scrag Brown and Mournfang Brown. Added up some whites. I then rewashed it back down again. Redid the same process with a different brown, uh, I'm trying to think, dried bark. And doing this, I wanted to create layers of colour, and I feel that did work quite nicely. I feel it worked out. Um, and also, I gave it a huge wash with Nung Oil all over before I finally did the final painted base and then highlighting it up. 
and I wanted that to look like he's used this armour for years. I want it to look like it's real battered leather armour, it's been sunburned, it's been like oiled where he's tried to sort of oil the, the rings of his metal, like the, the, the metal armour here and whatnot. You know, it's a really well loved piece of kit. Um, and I wanted it to have a real unusual leathered brown look compared to his fellow warriors as he's such a, a hedge warrior on the battlefield. And I think they come out quite nicely. It contrasts nicely with the blues and the greys that he's got on his cloak and his trousers as well. The trousers are very just basic, just literally his fortress grey, a uh, little bit of cantor blue mixed in, that's the, if that, it's mainly fortress grey to be honest. Uh, the fang, sorry, not fortress grey, the fang. Um, and then on the back here we have cantor blue and the fang using fortress grey as a highlight as well as white scar. And this is a wet blending. Uh, this is a wet blend. This is wet blending that I've used for this, and I'm really chuffed with this. It's come out very nicely, if I do say so myself. Uh, the hood, especially um, these bits here, it's a real nice gradient of colour. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I would, if I dare, I would like to add a Viking style um, pattern along the edge of the of this cloak, uh, similar to Thryden but more detailed. Almost like a chain link effect. But I'm, I'm going to leave that for now because I don't want to spoil what I've done. I spent nearly an hour just purely on, on this section of the cloak. I didn't, it was not even including this bit, it's purely just this bit. I spent nearly, well, over an hour. So yeah, I don't want to spoil it. Same with his skin. I did think of giving him a, a war paint look, but again, I'm just, I just dare not do it. <laughs> Basically, I dare not. I don't want to spoil what I've done. Uh, the hair is very easy. It's just Abaddon Black followed by Fortress Grey highlight. Seriously, gently dry brushed on, so it was a very gradual highlight of just one colour, because that's all it needed. Um, I do need to do his teeth still, having said that. Um, but otherwise, he is done. Oh, and Rhinox hide on the, the leather straps on his on his ankles, going up his legs and on his arms. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it's all very much the usual sort of stuff. Obviously, the you know, the, the, the armour is what the armour is. What little there is is just simply lead belcher and mithril silver and things. And yeah, I really wanted to give this guy a lot of work. I was about seven to eight hours It'll be pushing nine, to be quite honest, by the time I've done the base and things as well, because um, I want this guy to look really cool. Um, I might, I've got a few spare Rohan uh, Royal Guard arms, so maybe I'll put a Rohan Royal Guard um, a sword arm on the floor of his base, maybe. Not overly cheese it up with blood and stuff, because I find that can get a bit naff, if not done well. Um, and my blood painting techniques aren't great, I've not really done that much, so I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep with the less is more approach. Um, but yeah, these are the guys done so far. I hope you like what I've done. I've really enjoyed this guy. I've enjoyed basing these guys, you know, thinking of the future, how they're going to look finally with all the tundra tufts and the thick you know, static grass and things. I have Wildmen of Dunland, as I say, they're just down there somewhere. So I'll be working on them soon as well, getting them all painted up. And obviously, next time I do a video, hopefully this guy will be finished and I'll be working on Breeder Tall Spear as well. So on that note guys, thanks ever so much for watching, really do appreciate it, thanks for all your comments, I hope this motivates you with whatever you're doing with Dunland and things to come. Um, keep safe, hopefully Forge World and Games Workshop will be open, you know, back to normal very soon so we can start buying some more cool stuff. Um, if I could ask everyone else to not jump on the bandwagon and buy these guys because I want to do it first, okay? So if you could just wait till I've bought what I want, then you can crack on with what you need. Appreciate it. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Um, yeah, take it easy, guys. Enjoy, and thanks again.